My name is BJ Ward, and I'm a PhD student at AAVOG. I will be presenting today, along with three recent graduates of Virginia Commonwealth University, to tell you about Sludge Snap, our machine learning approach to field characterization of fecal sludge. Dr. Linda Strande, who leads the research group Management of Excreta, Wastewater, and Sludge at AAVOG, will be answering your questions at the conclusion of our presentation. So first, I would like to explain our motivation behind this project. As those of you who have previously worked with fecal sludge probably know, fecal sludge characteristics can be highly variable. You can see that in this histogram of influence COD measurements from Lubigi treatment plant in Kampala. As you can see, influent fecal sludge characteristics can be up to two orders of magnitude more variable than influent wastewater, and they also follow a completely different distribution. This high variability presents a unique challenge in operating and monitoring treatment technologies, and also in estimating quantities and qualities of fecal sludge for sanitation planning in cities. Characterization of treatment relevant metrics such as total solids, COD, ammonia, dewatering performance is currently really difficult to achieve in many places that rely on on-site sanitation because access to analytical laboratories can be prohibitively expensive or it's simply just not available. In situations like this, it would be very helpful to be able to supplement laboratory analysis with cheap, fast approximations of important sludge characteristics. In practice, to supplement laboratory analysis, practitioners and operators and researchers already use their expert knowledge to predict sludge characteristics and adjust operations accordingly. For example, this could include using sludge color as a predictor of level of stabilization, or whether the sludge comes from a pit latrine or a septic tank as a predictor of total solids or other characteristics. In this case study example from a pilot plant operated by Sanivation in Kenya, uh, which we will come back to several times throughout this talk, polymer flocculent dose is adjusted based on whether the sludge coming from the arriving truck was collected from a pit latrine or a septic tank. So the question is, how do we quantify and improve these field predictors of fecal sludge characteristics to make them more widely useful and accessible? And that was the focus of our recent publication, where we tested a number of possible field predictors based on practitioner experiences. For example, taking a picture of the sludge and using the color and texture from the picture as a predictor of its characteristics, or using probe measurements like conductivity and pH. We used these field predictors and quantified their power to predict treatment relevant analytical parameters using machine learning models. We built these models based on a data set of 465 samples collected from 420 different locations in Lusaka, Zambia. We characterized both laboratory analytical parameters and also performed field measurements. So for example, here at the bottom, you see us taking a picture of the sludge as a field measurement of color and texture. Results of this study were quite promising. We found that machine learning models offered a substantial improvement compared with current estimates of practitioners. Coming back to our example of predicting total solids for flocculent dosing at Sanivation, using a pit latrine or septic tank to predict total solids gave us a model with pretty low accuracy with an R squared of around 0.2. Contrasting that with a random forest model based on photographs of the sludge, specifically on color and texture data extracted from photographs, we were able to produce a much higher accuracy prediction with an R squared of 0.6. And we found that in general, machine learning models based on photos and probe measurements worked quite well to predict not only total solids, but also ammonium and dewatering performance in the sludge from this data set. As we continue our research, in the future, we can refine these predictions and practitioners can use them to improve the efficiency of their operation. And that's where the Sludge Snap app comes in. This app aims to package our models and image processing so that they can be easily used by researchers and operators in the field for rapid prediction of fecal sludge characteristics. Here, you see a picture of someone using our app. Next, three recent graduates from VCU will explain how they developed the Sludge Snap app based on our research. First, we color correct the photograph sludge. We use the color chart present in the left half of the images to correct the photo. 
After that, we need to identify the location of each Petri dish. Using Python-based image recognition libraries, we can find the circular border of each dish and isolate the pixels that make up each sample. Knowing this, we can extract color and texture information about each sample. This data becomes part of the input that the machine learning model uses to make its prediction. We split the machine learning portion of the app into two parts, model training and model testing. For the training, we use the data provided for us to reflect real sample results from the field. To, so we reformatted th that data, then used a random forest model in the scikit-learn library to create the trained models for each individual target var variables. During the testing, it would take the inputs from the image processing portion along with other inputs and compare them to the trained models. Afterwards, the app will output some predicted uh, values for each target variable. Hi, and welcome to our demo of Sludge Snap. We wrote this application as a mobile first web app, but I will be demoing it in a desktop browser for ease of recording. This is our homepage. As you can see, there are two options available. You can either upload your data without saving the resulting analysis to our database, or you can log in in order to save your analyzed data. I will be demonstrating the logged in upload flow as the anonymous upload is virtually the same. As you can see, we are using Auth0 for our authentication, which allows you to sign in using existing accounts such as Google. Upon logging in, you are immediately prompted to upload your data for analysis, which we will do now. On mobile, you will be prompted to either upload an existing photo from your phone or to take a new one. I will be entering data from a sample taken from a household pit latrine in Lusaka, Zambia. The image and other provided information are now being processed by our image recognition and machine learning models, which will provide predicted sludge characteristics based on the inputs. And there we have it, field-ready predictions for use by treatment plant operators and researchers. The proof of concept sludge snap app that you just saw demonstrated and the models behind it are promising, but they are based on 420 containments in one city. In order to move forward, we need to collect data in new cities and use it to build a global database of sludge characteristics. Based on that data, we can understand what models are globally or locally applicable and better quantify prediction uncertainties when the models are used in new cities. We also plan to streamline the data processing in the app to make it simpler and faster for users in the field. As we incorporate these improvements, the goal is that in the future, practitioners all over the world will be able to use SludgeSnap to supplement lab analysis in their cities. If you have questions about SludgeSnap or our machine learning model, please feel free to ask Dr. Strande during the question and answer portion of this session or get in touch with us by email.